that cost how much? Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. And this is that time of the day where we look at our favorite decor stores and have to ask ourselves, that, that cost how much? much? This is one of my favorite series we have where we take what we think is maybe overpriced items and we try and DIY them on a little bit of a budget. Yeah, it's a little challenge for ourselves. How can we make this item look as similar as we can, but for like way less money? Yes, and typically we've done stores, but today we're doing a themed item and that is plant stands. You know I love for plants and plant related items. But it's also crazy how expensive plant related items can be. I just found out. I know, plants are really, they can be expensive at like the bougie stores, mm -hmm. but the plant stands can be like five times as much. To put the plant in. I've cried. I've cried before. They're so expensive. <laughs> so we have three stores which sell three different plant stands that we are gonna try and recreate for much cheaper today. And if you guys love plants as much as we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button, whether you're a plant mom or maybe you're a faux plant mom. I don't judge. <laughs> no judgments here. <laughs> All right, do you wanna get started? Yes. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna try and attempt to recreate this anthropology basket planter. It's kind of like a more boho take on the mid-century modern planter. So this retails for 170 US dollars for a set of three of them. So if you boil it down, that's $56 for one of these basket planters. I think that's a little steep, so I think I'm gonna have some fun today trying to recreate it for a lot less. One of my favorite parts about this recreation today is that I get to use a thrift store item because I love buying things from the thrift store. It's so good. So if you look at the picture, it almost looks like there's a little stand with the legs and then there's a basket on top. So that's how I think I wanna try and attempt to recreate mine today. So we're gonna start by making a little platform with the legs first. So speaking of the thrift store, when I was there last, I saw this decorative bowl plate. I see things like these all the time at the thrift store, so it should be easy for you to find something similar. We see it to be wood and we needed to have like a curve to it a little bit so our legs can point out. So this plate from the thrift store cost me $2. To make the legs, I'm gonna be making them out of a basic wooden dowel, but to attach them, I thought I could use these copper caps. They're to go on the end of copper pipes, but they're the perfect size to slide a dowel in to help hold them in a place. So I picked up three of these since we need to make three legs and all of them together only cost me $2. My first step is to pre-drill three holes into my copper caps so it's really easy to get screws through them. I'm just using a small little drill bit and drilling through the copper caps to make a little hole. So I wanna place my three legs kind of evenly around the bottom of this bowl and I literally couldn't think of a better way to space out three spots on a circle other than to use a piece of string. So I cut a piece of string to the size of my circle and then laid it out, figured out how long that was, divided it by three, put three little pen marks onto my string and wrapped it back around so then I could figure out where the three little spots were that were evenly around the circle. Next up, I have some construction adhesive here, which is just basically really strong glue that I'm gonna use in combination with my screws to stick it on. So I'm adding some glue onto the top of the copper caps. And then you need your three little screws. I'm using the tiniest ones I could find, or I should say the shortest ones I could find because my bowl wasn't that thick. And then I'm just screwing through the holes in the caps with the glue to secure them in place with a screwdriver. So now that my copper caps are all completely dried and secure onto my plate, it's time to move on to the legs. So to do this, I'm gonna use a wooden dowel. This is a four foot one. And this single dowel only cost me $4 and I'm gonna use this to make all three legs. I conveniently picked up a dowel that fits perfectly inside of my caps so that it's nice and snug. So what I'm gonna do is just divide this whole dowel by three, cut it to that length, so then we have the three legs. So I just use a handsaw to cut my dowel into three different parts. Then I used a sander to just sand the one end nice and straight. And then I sanded off the other end to make it a little bit more rounded to look a little bit more polished and finished. So next up, this part was a little frustrating because the color of the dowel was so close to being right, but perfectionist me knew that it was a little off. So I wanted to stain it kind of more of a honey golden color, which unfortunately does add another $8 worth of stain onto the cost of this project. So you could skip it if you wanted to, but I wanted to stain it. So I'm staining it this honey color and they look beautiful it's time to glue them into place. So again, using my strong construction glue, I'm gonna put some glue in the caps and then stick the legs in and let them dry completely. Okay, so our basket planter ended up costing me $27 in total to make, and you can buy one of these out of this set for $56 each. All right, so next up, I'm going to be tackling this galvanized, that's a hard word for me to say, fun fact. Galvanized farmhouse plant stand from Pottery Barn. This one retails, hold on to your seats, folks, $263. Yeah, 
Well, guess what? It's not going to cost us that much to make. So first, I'm going to start with my three-quarter inch by three-quarter inch pieces of cedar wood. They're like a square dowel. I got five of these, and they were three dollars and thirty cents for all five. I'm going to be cutting nine and a quarter inch off of four of my pieces, and the remainder of the four pieces are actually going to be my four legs. And then I'm cutting four ten and three-quarter inch pieces off of a fifth piece of my square dowel. I don't know if you guys knows what I did wrong there, but I actually cut the tops off of five of my pieces. But that's okay because I had an extra piece lying around. But you're only cutting the tops off of four of your pieces, <laughs> like this. I also have my ten and three quarter inch pieces, and basically two of these are each going to create a square when I assemble it. Speaking of assembling it, should I do that now? Let's do that now. So for this, I'm going to be using wood glue and nails. I'm going to be creating my two main sides first. And that'll basically include all of my legs. When I started roughing in my leg pieces, I realized that they look like really long, like disproportionately tall. So I decided to cut these down, and I actually ended up cutting off ten and three quarter inches, which means that I could have just ended up using four pieces the entire time because I could have cut off my nine and a quarter inch piece and my ten and three quarter inch piece per piece of wood. So essentially. Save yourself a couple cents and only buy four pieces of four foot pieces of wood. Obviously, this all depends on the size of your bucket, but our bucket is about like a nine inch by nine inch top. So next up, I'm going to add my legs using the same method of wood glue and nail gunning it. All right, this is the majority of it. We're done, and obviously, I need to clean it up. I want to wood fill some of the like nail holes as well as give it a nice sand. So when I paint it black, it really looks like metal and not so much wood. Look how light it is. Oh God. Okay, our entire thing is painted and looking good. And a little can of paint at the hardware store, like the sample ones, will run you about like three dollars seventy cents, something like that. And next up, we have our bucket, which will run you about three dollars. And all I'm going to do is take out the handle, and it's ready to use as a pot. That was so easy to make, and I love how the final product turned out. And it was only ten dollars to make compared to. Two hundred and sixty-three dollars. Like, I think we deserve a Nobel Prize. And if you didn't buy that extra fifth piece of wood, which I found out you don't really need, depending on what size or how tall you want to make your plant stand, then you can save even more money. I feel like I want to try this whole like rectangular bones thing or like geometric for other DIY. So I'm just gonna mill on that while Becky takes it away with the next DIY. Just kidding. I'm gonna mill on that. I'm not gonna mill that. Cause it ain't barley. It's an idea. And last up, I'm gonna try and attempt to recreate this West Elm planter. This, I believe, is a tabletop one, so it's a little bit smaller. But still, this guy will retail you seventy dollars, which is a little bit steep, if you ask me. I actually really like the model of this one. I like the design of this one because it feels a lot like the mid-century modern plant stand that we all know so well. We actually did a DIY on that one a while ago, so check that one out. But it's kind of like that, but a little more simpler, a little different, a little shorter. I like it, so I want to make it anyways. But I think I could do it for less than seventy dollars. So we're off to a good start with the fact that I found a pot that looks very similar to the one in the West Elm one from the thrift store, and this only cost me six dollars. Yes, love it. But the problem is mine is a little creamier, and the West Elm one is like a nice, crisp, glossy white. So my very first step is going to be to spray paint this white. Okay, so my pot is now completely bright white, and I should add to a running total that a can of spray paint cost me eight dollars. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to building the actual base of this planter, and to do that, I'm gonna make it out of a piece of one by four pine wood, and this costs me six dollars. Okay, so next we have to do a bunch of measuring. Trust me, this is easy. So the first thing we need to measure is how big our pot is. So go ahead and measure the entire width of the pot, and then draw that measurement out onto your piece of wood. Do this twice so that we can have two pieces that are that size. You'll also notice that I left a little gap between both of my pieces because when you use the saw, it does eat up some of the wood. Go ahead and use the saw and cut out both of those pieces. Okay, now we have even more measurements to do, so stay with me. Because this planter actually has a little bit of a base and sits inside of the stand, 
we'll need to measure the size of the base of our planter, which is a little smaller than the overall pot size. So measure that distance out and mark that onto the wood. Then figure out how deep this part is and mark that onto the wood. When you connect these measurements, you should have this tiny little rectangle that sits around the top of your piece of wood. Next, we need to draw out the curve of the bottom of the planter, so use any round object you have. I'm opting for just a plain bowl because it's about the right size I want. And then lastly, what we need to mark out is a little notch so that our two pieces can slot together to create this nice X shape of the base of the planter. So your notch needs to be as wide as your piece of wood is, so our wood is 3 quarters of an inch, so we're going to remember that. I drew lines down both sides of these markings just so it was really easy to figure out what we're doing next. So you might be wondering now how do we get into all of those notches with a saw and that is by using a drill bit that is the same size as your saw blade. So we need to add holes into any place where the saw blade can't naturally get so that would be on the lower bottom side of our top long piece we need to cut out and on the lower bottom side of both of the notches that we need to cut out. That way we can flip the saw blade in and go across. So that's what I'm going to do next is use my jigsaw plus my drill, drill the holes I need to and then use the jigsaw to get to all the other cuts. Okay, so both of my pieces are cut out and you can see I did the notch on the bottom on one and the top on the other and I'm sure you can notice because I can notice that my cut job wasn't the most amazing but I'm learning with you guys. I'm not an expert on this so the more I do it probably the better it will get but I'm going to sand this whole thing down and I think make it look a lot cleaner. I then used some wood glue to attach the two cross pieces together. And then I followed up with a screw down the center to make sure it was extra secure. So once the wood glue was completely dried, I'm just giving it a stain of this ready brown color that looks very similar to the photo, and the stain cost me $8. So now that my stain is dried, I think this is looking pretty spot on if you had to ask me. But the most exciting part is gonna be adding the pot onto it. This looks so good. The pot fits in the base perfectly, and then the dark base against the white pot, it pops, it's so, Beautiful. I think, I think it's safe to say that we nailed this one. It looks so identical, but once I put a plant in it, we'll show them side by side and you guys can tell me how you think I did. So in total, this pot cost me $26.50 to make and the original one retails for $70. All right guys, tell us how you thought we did. I mean, I think pretty good this time. If you want to judge us on more of our attempted free creations, we have a full playlist of That Cost How Much videos that we've done, which we will link below and in the cards for you. Mm -hmm. Urban Outfitters. Anthropology. Nordstrom, we've done fashion. Yeah, uh, we've done a lot. We love this series. Let us know what stories you guys want us to tackle next. And just say a little hi in the comments. We just want to say hi. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked today's video, make sure that you give it a like. And if you loved it, go ahead and subscribe. And I'm gonna tell you to ring that bell as well on top of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye! All right, welcome to the end screen. Now this one isn't exactly a DIY recreation, but I thought it 100% needed a shout out. This gorgeous little portrait of my Danny is so absolutely cute. If you have any art that you've made of us or you wanna send to us, you can also use the hashtag Sorgo Squad to make sure we see it.